Good morning, everybody. <laughs> this is no, this is showing us setting it up. Here you go. Okay. Hi, Elise. How you doing? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, we're going to start class here with uh, our, my daughter, Beth Wagner. I'm so excited to have her here. I was saying yesterday that, um, you know, one of the things, there's been so many horrible things about COVID-19, so many people suffering. But one of the blessings, one of the beautiful things is getting to spend some time with my daughter, Beth. And uh, gosh, you need to bend down so people can see you. <laughs> So anyhow, uh, in, uh, we're going to talk about some of the things she's passionate about, and, uh, including composure growing. We've also had uh, a lot of time to talk about uh, important things that matter to us. And in particular, we've been talking about uh, those that have um, been uh, protesting the George Floyd uh, murder and uh, what we can do uh, to support the in uh, systematically disenfranchised and, uh, and discriminated against. So it's been a really interesting time to have a chance to talk about all these things. And I don't know if you wanted to add anything yeah. else. Thanks for acknowledging that, yeah. Mom. All right, all right. So we're here today to talk about uh, kombucha brewing. And um, if today's um, uh, Facebook Live slash Zoom looks a little better, it's because I have a daughter who's a lot more tech savvy. So we have a little screen share on the first fermentation stage of kombucha brewing, and then we're going to how to do the second stage of kombucha. So Beth, uh, can you share the screen for our little video of the first stage? We did this part last week. Sure. So kombucha, as you may know, is fermented tea. And fermentation is how you make wine here. It's the process of, you know, bacteria and yeast eating sugar and turning something from, you know, something sweet into something more sour and vinegary. So you can do that with fruit tea, which is what we're going to be showing you. So it goes in two stages, and I'm going to go ahead and show the first stage now. So that's the first stage. Uh, were the people on the Zoom call able to see that? Uh, could you see that, Elise? Yeah, okay, good. Great. Uh, okay, so, and now we're going to do the second stage of fermenting uh, the kombucha. And this is the part where you actually flavor the tea and it can take on uh, many different flavors, lots of different recipes. One of Beth's favorite is uh, rosemary and apricot, but we were out of apricots. So we're going to do a strawberry mint kombucha and also a blueberry ginger kombucha. So uh, Bethy, you want to uh, talk a little bit about that? Sure. Let me just recap. So this is our kombucha, which just finished up stage one, which we just showed that video for. So the way that it goes is you brew a batch of tea. I usually brew a gallon worth of tea. Um, 
And eight tea bags and one cup of sugar. Yep. So you make basically a big batch of sweet tea. You can use any tea that's not herbal. Um, for some reason, the herbal tea doesn't work well for kombucha, but I usually just use basic black tea. You let that cool down to room temperature, and then you add in what's called your SCOBY. And I'm going to go ahead and take this cheesecloth off. You put the, the cheesecloth over top once you add in your SCOBY and let it sit for 7 to 10 days to keep out any bugs, but also to allow the gas, which is the side effect of fermentation, to escape through the lid. So the SCOBY, which my mom mentioned, stands for Symbiotic Colony of Bacteria and Yeast eats sugar. So that's the reason that you make it a sweet tea, because that gives the SCOBY food. And the, the SCOBY is kind of, it's kind of gnarly looking. I'll give you all a, a little shot of it. It looks like a moldy kind of mass, but it actually isn't moldy. It's very healthy. It looks and like a little flexible frisbee or something when you take it out. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to wash my hands before I touch it, because you want to just keep it clean. And then we're going to store it in uh, this SCOBY has been around uh, from person to person. So not only do you get to share the tea, you can share the SCOBY, which um, can be passed on to your friends, sort of like a sourdough bread recipe, if you've ever done that. Yep. And they get, uh, the SCOBY grows. So this is a lot bigger than when I got it. Uh, soon enough, it'll be big enough to split into half, and then I can share it with my mom. But this gives you a good look at what the SCOBY actually is. All right, and I'll put this in the refrigerator. You gotta add a little bit of the raw tea to it. Oh, okay. So the SCOBY has a little bit of juice to sit in. And what this is right now, which I'm adding in, is, is the just plain kombucha. Just basic, basic fermented tea. Per, fermented stage one kombucha. Exactly, so it's just right. fermented black tea. You could drink it like this if you wanted to, um, but it doesn't taste. It, it tastes pretty plain. Do you want to right. smell it, Mom, and describe it? So to me, this smells a little bit like um, a vinegary smell and a little, uh, what's it, musty? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. What do you think? Do yeah. you smell vinegar? Yeah, it's yeah. vinegary, and that's right. Yeah. That's the, the way that it works. Okay. So what we decided what we were going to do today um, when you make the kombucha in the second phase, you flavor it and then you store it in uh, serving size bottles. Or uh, So we have uh, enough here tea to um, make three separate bottles and then we're gonna do another uh, batch here. So this batch is gonna be the strawberry ginger. We're gonna do three bottles of that. And this will be, no, the blueberry ginger and this will be the strawberry mint. Yep. That sounds okay. good. And I, I almost forgot to mention, which would have been neglectful. So kombucha is an ancient, like it's been around forever. I, I think the internet said between like 200 and 2000 years. It originated in Manchuria, China, but it's commonly considered a Korean drink because it was brought to Korea relatively uh, a long time ago, basically. And so it's an, an Asian fermented tea. And, it's been happening and it has a, a lot of uh, supposed health benefits, including improved digestion, oh. improved the immune system. Um, you know, um, what are, are there some, some other things that you were? It's good for your digestion. Yeah. Okay. Basically, you don't want to drink too much of it a day. Usually, they recommend like one glass, medium glass a, a day, but okay. it's tasty. So sometimes I'll overdo it. Some some people dr drink it every single day, right? It's yeah, their health drink drink it Yeah. Day. Um, yeah, for sure. So these are the ingredients that we're going to be Hold using. Because I can't see that. What did you say? Blueberry and ginger first. Mm -hmm. So we're going to use blueberries and raw ginger root. Which I'm going to just chop up over here so you all can see what we're doing. And we're going to put this into a food processor so that it gets emulsified with some of the raw tea. And this doesn't have to be, you know, the idea is not that this is going to get totally blended up into the tea. It's just going to sit in the tea and flavor it. So it, you don't have to make it into a paste or anything. So I'm going to put this ginger in the food processor. And then I'll just go ahead and grab a big handful of those blueberries. Adding the blueberries. I like blueberries, so I'm going to put in more. Sounds good. You don't need a, a whole bunch, but... Yeah. Okay. If we have some left over, we can always put it in the 
And then I'm just gonna put a little bit of this raw tea in there to make the food processor run. And this is what we'll be adding back into the bottles. Grandson is here, he would love this because he loves the noise that the food processor makes. And then what we're going to do next is fill these bottles with the raw tea that we're going to be flavoring. So do you want to have this one, Mom? Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to fill them up, not all the way, because we still have to add in the flavor tea. And also you'll see that when I do that, it's starting to bubble in the bottle. And that's because, like I said, a byproduct of kombucha brewing is fermentation. And so it gets bubbly. And that's why you don't cover it with a, uh, that's why you cover it with a, a cloth instead of a closed lid. So Beth, uh, maybe you could tell our viewers a little bit about what happens if you close it with a closed lid. Tell us a little bit about one of your particularly memorable kombucha brewing, early kombucha brewing experiments. Yeah, so I had done maybe, I did maybe two batches um, of kombucha brewing. Let's see, a little bit more than this one. And what, as you'll see, what you do in stage two is once you add the flavoring in, which we're going to do next, you just cap it up and close it tight. And that means that the fermentation, like the, 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 gases. the gases that are created as a byproduct are trapped in here, and that will make kombucha carbonated, which is really nice. So it'll get like fizzy and flavorful. So that's why you do this second version. But when you do that, gases do build inside, so you need to take it off. You need to basically drink it or put it in your fridge, which will stop the, the, the gas from building up. Which because stops the otherwise, what happens? Because otherwise it will explode. And I actually made a batch of blueberry ginger in my apartment in D.C. <laughs> and it exploded all over my apartment, all over my ceiling, floor. Like, it got inside a closed cupboard. Oh. Looks like it was a mess. We have a little um, yeah. thing to stick in there. Mm -hmm. okay. 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 There we go. At least you're out walking today. Uh, well, I'm getting ready to go um, for a hike with my doggy. I just had like got all my things I had to do beforehand. So I'm kind of on, on the move. Sorry about that. Oh, that's great. I love that you're tuning in and, I, and, and exercising. I wanted to ask um, Lauren uh, if- no, Beth, this is Beth. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I, I, I wanted to ask, um, I, I do make kombucha sometimes, but my biggest frustration is our house, the our temperature is, you know, not, we live in an old house. So I think sometimes our house is too cold um, to get a good brew. So I was wondering if you had any experience with um, any of like the mats or like, I mean, what's your, do you, where, where do you typically place your kombucha while it's fermenting? Yeah, it's a good question. So basically, and you may know this, like the hotter it is, the faster it is, it'll brew. So you can do it in like a cooler environment, but it just takes a longer time. Um, they have these kombucha mats, which you can put around your jar and it heats them, right? Um, I haven't ever used them, but I, you know, I feel like they make them for a reason. Mm -hmm. Another thing you could do now that it's the summer is like put it outside. A lot of the way that they've done fermentation with like, I know that the way they do fermentation with kimchi at least, just is like- right fermented cabbages they, they bury it in the ground so i don't know you can experiment i think as long well as that's the field tight, I think that, it's good <laughs> i mean it is the fun part of the kombucha process is like the whole experimenting and see what happens but i like mine really fizzy and i found that I, for some reason just the environment in our home is like it's you know but i might do the outside thing just find a place that's kind of well, we Warm. started this a week ago and we wanted it to be ready for today. And I, right. like on Wednesday, I said, should we put it outside so it's busier? She goes, I think it's doing okay mm -hmm. in the house. But 
Yeah, yeah it's yeah. it's quite busy actually. Okay, so um, so this is what a this is what like completed bottles will look like. You see that we left some space at the top, and that's because the the fermentation process is going to continue, and the scoby, which is in the in the tea itself, is going to be eating the sugar from the fruits. So basically, just needs to have some sugar. So we're doing blueberry and ginger and eat the fruit, the sugar from the blueberry and the ginger. But you can also do like any type of jam, any type of fruit juice, anything that has sugar. Um, as I'm sure you know, at least, and that'll work. What what kind of recipes do you like to make with your kombucha? Elise, what kind of um, what kind of recipes have you used? The best ones I've made, I make one where I um, boil down blueberries with ginger, like make sort of a syrup. Um, that one's usually good. And I've made a mango um, ginger one. That was good too. Um, I'm trying to think I've made, um, I think, I'm trying to think. I did some like strawberry rosemary one one time. Um, I think that one was just like flat because I don't know, like I said, it, sometimes I don't get a really good fizz to mine. It just um, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, it just depends. Um, and uh, right now I've, I've had my SCOBY in my refrigerator, uh, you know, because I just didn't have time to, to you know, mess with going through a, a new batch. But I think too, like the viability of the SCOBY varies as well so where did um, you get your scoby from Elise? um i a friend <laughs> I, I yeah. love it's, it's kind of like sourdough like you said the sourdough starter yeah. or or like friendship starter bread starter you could just you get it from your friends if they have a you know a scoby that's getting too big they split it and give you one i, I love that though you know it's passing on uh this <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. community of bacteria and we're, we're community so I, yeah I think it's, it's fun mm -hmm. I agree I do like I like the I like the jars too I I typically just use a mason jar because that's what I have and I'm always very careful about making sure they're sort of sterile so it's they're easy to clean but those um are those special like she where did you get your um, bars uh, your jars uh, for brewing and they yeah, where, some, where did you get them uh i got them online i think i got them at amazon okay. and some strawberry uh, jam and um mint from our garden uh, i see charlie yeah there's charlie hi charlie hi. good morning hi charlie He's like, what is that. going on? <laughs> Good morning. He likes the food processor though. Hang in there one second. Charlie. All right, we're on the food processor. Can go ahead and do it. I'm just gonna chop these. Sorry. Oh, they're not gonna go in here. They can take it away. Okay, that's it. That's it. Okay, and what we're gonna do, Elise, is. Uh, we made a gallon and she has three bottles, so we're making this whole batch. Uh, sure. We're just going to do this batch in this uh, large jar, the first fermentation mm -hmm. jar. Mm -hmm. Now, I've never thought of using any like jam, but that makes sense that, you know, to. Um... Yeah, it's easy and it like packs in the sugar. So. Mm -hmm. A little sweeter, and then I'm just going to add in some sliced strawberries to make it look nice while it's fermenting. So, at least Beth called us one night. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, there's kombucha on my ceiling, and I'm like, it cannot be that bad. I thought she was was on top of a refrigerator, it was inside a cat. It was, it was, it got inside my closed cabinets. It was such a mess, yeah. So, then she says, I'm going to teach you how to do this. I said, You better teach me. Minus the explosion part. Yeah, you got all of my lessons, painful lessons, not having to live them yourself. Um, so anyways, now we screw this on tight for those who haven't made kombucha before. And that means that when the fermentation continues, it's going to be trapped inside this, just as 
the fermentation in these bottles is getting trapped in there. And so the end result is that these will be carbonated when we're done. Well, will this carbonate faster because there's less air? Yeah, it probably will. I actually haven't ever uh, made it in the size, the second set fermentation. It's fine. Okay. But it may just take a little longer to get fizzy. So we'll just keep an eye on it. Well, it's an experiment here too. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Elise, thanks so much for joining us today. And uh, we're going to, I think Beth is going to make another little video like she did that. Could you see that first video? What was that? The, oh, the that first thing? clip? The little first clip mm -hmm. that she yeah. did? Yeah, that showed up nicely, yes. Okay, so okay. We'll, do, we'll do a second one for Beth, this too. So, yeah. So, uh, and, any other tips, Beth, or any questions, Elise? Um, I don't think so. So I think the thing is, I probably need to get something that I get a better seal, like those um, those bottles. Um, you know, I think that's like Beth said, the the pressure is probably it builds up better, and you get more fizz. So I'm gonna try that. And apparently, so. the fizz is the best part of this whole thing. <laughs> it is good. It is good. So what we'll do? I I just. I just, right. I think it's like a little science experiment, you know, it's so, it's fun. So anyway, yeah. thanks Beth. Yeah. Get outside, yeah, sure. enjoy your day. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thanks everybody for joining us. And uh, this is Mindful Monday and you can check this out. Uh, the little videos will be on um, our website as well as on our Facebook page. Page. So thanks for joining us. Have a great Mindful Monday. Thanks, Beth. Sure thing. We'll let you know how these turn out.